You ready? Engage. Delay that order. Engage. What? So you want me to play it? Yeah, stress that. Uh, stress that thing. Play it, play it. Dr. Quinn Crusher was the world's most celebrated astrophysicist until an experiment in trans-reality travel ended in disaster. In an attempt to restore his reputation, he retreated to his garage where he secretly invented an interdimensional engine and installed it in the multiple Earth transportation conveyance in space. But on its maiden voyage, the Metkis crashed, permanently destroying the navigation matrix. Now, Quinn and his crew must transport from universe to universe, hoping one day they'll return home to Earth. Quest for an Unknown Planet is the brainchild of Josh Pike and Ronald Barrett. They've been described as the Lennon and McCartney of science fiction television, having worked together on such cult favorites as Infinite Stars 3000, Irreversible Journey, and Meteora, Dog of the Stars. It's my job to make sure that the writing stays uh, dangerous and interesting, kind of like what John Lennon basically did for the Beatles. As a John Lennon, it's my job to make sure that every episode has a heart. Wait, you think you're the John Lennon? Currency. I'm the John Lennon. You, you're not even McCartney. You're, at best, Ringo Starr. You're Mike Nesmith. You're Mark David Chapman. Jesus. Guys, do you want me to stop the footage? No, keep going. No, it's keep fine. Okay. A lot of people give me a look when I tell them that I'm directing a sci-fi show because my background is in coming-of-age period dramas. But science fiction isn't all about space lizards and, and lasers. Like any good fiction, regardless of genre, it's about the human being and their shortcomings and relating to each other and struggling with the choices they've made in their lives. And ultimately just uniting and using lasers to defeat those space lizards. Quinn Crusher, the leader. Well, if I'm gonna fight their leader, I might as well learn their native martial art. I've been trying to make it as an actor for about 15 years. So, yeah, a lot of debt, a lot of dollar menu dinners. So on this planet, women make love with strangers instead of just shaking their hands? How intriguing. I'm just so psyched we got season two. And I know that is entirely because of the fans, so thank you. Thank you. I mean it. Thank you. Dr. Reginald T. Savonius, the scientist. I play Dr. Reginald T. Savonius, a richly textured character with a conflicted soul. Who? Me? <laughs> I shall shake these women's hands, Earth style. Yes! <laughs> Jasmine Ryder, the warrior. Look, science fiction Especially doesn't have... Fiction. This genre doesn't have a great track record when it comes to casting strong female characters. With the character of Jasmine, I feel like we've broken that trend. Shoot, I love shopping as much as the next girl, except I go shopping at the flumpin' bullet store. You wanna flump my hand? Flump that! But I will let you flump my flumper. It feels so empowering to do something for all womankind, you know? I totally feel like the Carrie Bradshaw of science fiction. F yeah. Wait, did I say flumper f Pharaoh, the alien enigma. Problem solved by me. Pharaoh. Well, Pharaoh, of course, was introduced in the episode The Enemy of My Enemy's Enemy is My Enemy, which was nominated for an Emmy. Pharaoh, stop juggling and help us defuse this bomb! Why stop juggling when I can do both at the same time? We realized instantly that we had a winner on our hands by the way the fans reacted to Pharaoh. 
Originally, he was just supposed to appear in that one episode, but we decided to make him a permanent member of the cast. Yeah, like you didn't already have the action figures. No! Throwing candy at the monitor. Yeah, we're, we're sorry about that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Calm down. I just... I want him dead. Farrah. I want Farrah dead. Not, not the head of the network. Not the head of the network. That's it. The fictional character is who he wants dead. Yeah. I watched the series in its entirety, frame by frame, to get this costume exactly right. This, this is his amulet. Okay, getting a good look at this, this is his amulet. It controls his telepathic powers and his ability to jump between dimensions and take him to any place he thinks of. He's got um, laser eyes. He's got the power of flight. Telepathy, levitation, super strength. He can stop time. Immovability. Chlorokinesis. He can de-atomize something and re-atomize it as a different thing. His one weakness is copper, but that's fine because he can turn it into aluminum. It can be kind of hard to create dramatic tension when you have a character who can basically do anything at any time. But we find a way. The ionosphere is reacting with Pharaoh's positronic field, knocking him unconscious. We shall have to face this challenge without him. If Pharaoh were here, he could solve this problem in a second. Too bad he's inside that wormhole, visiting his mother. Pharaoh drank milk, and now he's asleep. Well, the great thing about a second season is that we get to build on everything that we established in the first season. There's going to be more of everything. More action, more suspense, more... Theatrical truth. Allegorical plots. More drinking and shooting. More episodes. That's the main thing. More Pharaoh. More Pharaoh. More Pharaoh.